Virtual Racing School was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. There needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world, including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Ray Alfala. And Ray Alfala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR beginner for his iRacing series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Kronke. Martin Kronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell De Jong. Mitchell De Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series. And many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our world championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started.
virtual racing school was developed to provide support to the next generation of sim racers. No matter if you're a rookie or veteran or what car or track you'll be racing, our goal is to provide training every step of the way. We found that iRacing can be quite difficult without proper training. There needed to be a way to prepare for on-track racing. With VRS, you can literally learn from the best sim racers in the world, including four-time NASCAR iRacing world champion Ray Alfala. And Ray Alfala is a four-time champion of the NASCAR Beginner for his iRacing series. Three-time iRacing Grand Prix world champion Martin Kronke. Martin Kronke becomes a three-time world champion. Rallycross world champion Mitchell de Jong. Mitchell de Jong is now champion for the iRacing Rallycross World Championship Series. And many other top sim racers. Data packs include everything you need to start learning. Our world championship coaches create the data packs by setting a hot lap or a series of fast laps for you to compare, analyze, and replicate. Data packs also include a tutorial where the coach points out techniques they use to hit the fast lap. This gives you access to the latest driving techniques and setups before you even hit the track. Sign up for a free account and download the VRS telemetry logger. With this application running seamlessly in the background, your laps automatically start syncing to the VRS website. From there, you can analyze and compare two laps of your choice, whether it's your data, the coaches, or your teammates. VRS will automatically target improvement opportunities so you can get up to speed even faster. VRS also makes it easy for you to request and schedule one-on-one -on -one or group coaching sessions. These sessions can range from 30 to 90 minutes and you can select the car, track and setup combination of your choice. Visit virtualracingschool.com today to sign up and get started. Hello and welcome to round 6 of the Apex Racing League Mazda Cup live on Apex Racing TV. My name is Sam Fitzpatrick, alongside me is Andy Thompson, Sam Kumo working on the cameras tonight and we are here for the 4th to final round of the championship as the season begins to enter the home stretch. Um, Andy, what's a circuit we have got for this round of the championship? We've been to our fair few of uh, kind of narrow circuits more recently. Lime Rock Park was the uh, last host, but this Bathurst circuit is going to be pretty mega. Lots of slipstreaming in these MX-5 cars and uh, a massive challenge as well over the elevation and the uh, tight walls around the mountain. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be an entertaining night of racing tonight with the three races that we have. Bathurst, obviously, um, very elevated track, uh, 174 metres from the highest point to the lowest point. Lots of um, slight little rises over the track where, you know, you get this car in the wrong position, you could be seeing a wall, certainly in that mountain section, which is real tight, twisty um, section of the track. Uh, and then it leads out into the bottom half of the section, which has got you really fast straight, where we will see some excellent slipstreaming. But, you know, if the any of the last rounds go by, we're, we're all in for a, a, a roller coaster ride of um, action tonight, I think, Sam. Yeah, I think so. We might just be able to show you the championship points quickly um, with the uh, standings going into this round of the season. These do take into consideration the drop score and uh, there are two more rounds to go. Apologies, I said it was the fourth to final. It's actually the third to final uh, round tonight. And Simon X still leads the way. However, that lead was pretty much halved by Caleb Hydes in the last round. Uh, really, uh, uh, Simon X uh, first bad round of the championship. So he's ahead of Hydes, Pinocchio, Maxwell and Yamantis. And in the amateur standings, we've got Dan Palmley with a strong lead over Damian McMullen and Darren Doherty. Um, however, we have already completed the qualifying session for this uh, round of the championship. And so we should be able to go through your grid for this opening race of the evening. And uh, on 
pole position is going to be Tom McQuell. A brilliant qualifying uh, from him to uh, take the his first ever pole position in Apex Racing League history. There's Tom Valentini, Aris Yamantes, Ivan Pinocchio, Caleb Heise was faster than in practice but couldn't quite deliver in qualifying. He starts in fifth alongside championship rival Paul Simonek. Ronald Moons lines up in seventh. Then it's Philip Lauer, Christian Schmitz, uh, Dan Palmley is top of the amateurs once again. Victor Lewandowski is in 11th. Then it's Thor Chulay rounding out the top 12. And then behind that, it's Doherty, Healy, Sen, McMullen, Bremer, Lengert in his first race, I believe, Walsh, Franco, Fowler, and Samson rounding out the order. We have just got one more car to get onto the grid. We could have 50 more seconds of qualifying, uh, of gridding up potentially. We are just waiting for Parallel Simonek to get onto the grid. You can just see that vacant spot in sixth position at the moment. Because three 15 minute races tonight. This first one, the grid ordered by the qualifying times and then the next two will be a random reverse grid nine uh, 11 places for race two and nine places for race three Simnek appears onto the grid and so we are pretty much ready to go here so Luxembourg one two on the grid McQuell ahead of Valentini and we are away racing for 15 minutes of action at Mount Panorama. It's a very even start for everyone, honestly, all the way down the order. Barely any changes heading into turn one as they get into uh, single file and start the chase up the hill for the first time. So it's McQuell leading the way, Valentini in second place, but already there is going to be a swap between the two of them. And this is what we're going to see throughout tonight's. Hyde's also getting past Pinocchio. You can just see those two alongside a little bit further back. But it seems like Valentini is going to to get this one done they are fellow countrymen these two they're not teammates and Valentini does storm into the lead of the region. yeah great start by all the drivers the only one that probably had a little bit of wheel spin at the start was Pinocchio but obviously he lost out there to Hydes going into after the down the first straight down the mountain straight so uh Caleb Hydes obviously capitalizing on Pinocchio getting a bit of wheel spin off the off the line going in there but the front front three getting away all nice and cleanly uh, and Hyde was actually considerably faster in the um, practice there, Sam. So he must have had a bit of an issue or got caught up in the car. So he's got to come back now from uh, fourth place to try and take his third. But he seems to be the quickest guy on the track in the practice. So we'll see if we can get his way through um, through the through the um, traffic. But obviously, as we go over to the mountain section, the tight, twisty bit of the mountain sections, we see a bit of a car going out wide there, and that was uh, Pinocchio. Or Dogmantis, I think. So this is a, that curb on the right there is actually treacherous. It's really deceiving because it's quite big and quite um, high. So if you hit that, it really will unsettle your cars. As they come down off the mountain for the first time, we've got Russ Fowler here in 19th with Lagat, the first obviously race that he's uh, racing on the uh, Mazda Cup tonight. So uh, good luck to him. Uh, and Lewandowski, who had uh, a good qualifying the last round, but um, seems to form away in the in the in the races, is uh, currently lining second place in the AM Championship. So hopefully he'll have a better race tonight than what he did on the last round but certainly uh, action packed and all kept it quite clean over the mountain section Sam. Yeah we're all very good as Hydes has now moved past Yamantis so Hydes now up two places and he's going to go for a third here and for second position on track and there he goes and Yamantis trying to take advantage of this straight away so McQuill awesome qualifying for him but probably one of the least important qualifiers of the season this honestly compared to uh, the other circuits and McQuill having to defend even more see Simnek just losing sight of Hydes of course they started alongside each other on the grid but Hydes has now got three cars between himself and his main rival for the championship Valentini then leading the way he's got a one second gap now that's just about within draft range and, and you don't really need to give uh, Caleb Hydes too much of an invitation so whilst that gap has formed I expect the others to catch up as they got three wide that is uh, a very ugly sandwich honestly the SCC car of um, of um, Healy was in the middle there. I think it's Franco who's been able to come out top. Yeah, going free wide into what they call Hell's Corner uh, is is very brave or very stupid sometimes because um, obviously you can get out wide on there and that wall is. Uh, 
quite inviting into that first corner, but they all seem to get through that corner quite straight, coming down into uh, Griffin's Bend and then going up into the cutting, which is a really narrow part of the circuit. And I certainly wouldn't advise these cars to go two or three wide, but I think they're not heeding my advice and uh, going two or three wide into this uh, cutting section, which can get quite treacherous. So you've got quite open oil car, of course, spun there on the left hand side, so Franco, uh, which is easily to do. And it's a really horrible position switching out. You have to wait for the whole field to go past you before you can get going or else you will impede other drivers but that as I was probably going to see a replay here so going up into the cutting so the first one's a fast left-hander but it goes into a really tight left hand as we can see here so a car in front of it and it looks like he got hit from behind and unfortunately got spun around there Sam yeah that was a shame for Frank he was uh running very close you can see there was almost second day contact as he tried to uh, rejoin but uh, he was very very close to the car ahead did well to just get on the brakes to avoid any contacts but driver behind was uh, left uh, less on their toes and uh, giving him a couple of taps round uh, but we could kind of see that one happening from a mile away with how close they were all running to one another these guys are running fairly close as well Hyde's making up good time in the mountain section and already the driver who starts here down in fifth position he's going to be in the lead by the end of lap two there goes Caleb Hyde's not sure if he'll have the pace to pull away from um Valentini now but uh, he's done everything that he wanted to do big favor for the pole position I mean of course an Australian probably gives him a bit of an advantage driven more laps around the circuit than most uh, than most of these uh, op opponents and um, but uh, yeah wasn't a great qualifying but yeah doing very well in the race as we uh, start lap three yeah, so we obviously got held up on the qualifying lap. Um, he's obviously been stretching his legs, starting in fifth place, is now in first place, so showing his real pace here. And it be interesting to see if he can get away from Valentini. He certainly knows the layout of this track, and uh, he's a very quick driver, so Valentini's going to have his work cut out to try and keep the uh, tails of him. Uh, but we've got Germantis in third, Pinocchio, Macquell in fourth, Pinocchio fifth, and Simonek not really making up a lot of room. He might be feeling a bit of pressure, Sam, because obviously the last round they had was uh, probably one to forget for Powell. Um, so therefore, he's uh, got his drop round, so he needs to ensure that he um, has constant round, and that could be on his mind for making sure that he gets round uh, the track in, a, in one piece and done it as we got a spinner here Nathan Healy unfortunately goes and going down the mountain straight it's easy because you can see the track there and how undulating it is down there it's a really fast uh, a lot of damage there coming uh, at the front of Nathan Healy's car as we as we see coming down the start well a bit of contact coming out of turn one uh, going into free wide oh, a bit of car on the grass is he going to come back? Yeah, he come back off the grass and unfortunately hit Nathan Healy. So Nathan was a, an unfortunate bystander of, uh, I'm not who, sure who that was actually, was trying to pass on the grass. Doherty uh, was the driver going for the fairly ambitious move. I saw the pair of them off the circuit, I wasn't quite sure what was going on. Doherty managed to get back on nice and quick, but uh, Healy with uh, significant damage. Does have a faster pet, so he can still score points, just needs to finish within uh, either on the lead lap, one lap down or two laps down which is very easy around this Bathurst circuit because it's such a long lap. Um, so he just needs to uh, yeah, get back to the pits, pick up that faster pair, and um, yeah, try to complete one more lap if he can. So here is the onboard then for Doherty, and you can already see it's kind of three wide. Oh, it was ambitious, and, then, and he doesn't want to back out of it, loses control of the car, and very lucky not to get damaged himself, but it certainly did slow him down. I'm sure Healy will be... Uh, Fairly annoyed with that one. Those two usually uh, battling each other a lot, and uh, on the most of the time, it's very well mannered, but uh, not on that occasion. Oh. Ronald Moons alongside Christian Schmitz. Oh, hard off the circuit for Schmitz. He's going to do well to avoid the wall hit. Can he slide it round? Uh, he did pretty well. So Schmitz going for that overtake for eighth position, uh, ninth position, sorry. Uh, but it hasn't worked for him. He's down to 11th now, but escapes damage. Yeah, uh, that was a bit of an ambitious move there and unfortunately coming down the uh, skyline to the S's to the dip up towards the forest there well um, is a very fast part of the circuit almost flat out in these cars in fact it probably is flat out in these cars uh, and any slight movement and like I was saying with the undulating ground it uh, can throw the cars off balance quite quickly uh, on, on this track so we've got uh, for Tolol in, in eighth with uh, Moons just behind him uh, and Parmeli the top am in 10th place there just behind these two that are battling going into uh, Griffin's Bend which is a fast 
right hander really you're going top speed at the end a slight dab of the brake going into this corner and, and you want to be out wide to try and cut back into this corner you can use some of the track on the left hand side to maximize your speed as you can see they're perfectly done uh, going up into the into the cutting so a bit of a battle here between Ronald Moons and Paul Tolly with Parmalee just catching them up with these two battling being the top ham so down Parmalee again the top ham uh, seems to have an excellent last two rounds and uh, on course at the moment to get the top ham place Sam. yeah that would um, he, he's almost got one hand on the trophy already he's just been so good Ever since the round two of the championship at Interlagos, he's been exceptional and really has grown round on round. Uh, plenty of experience as well for himself. Did uh, get a trophy last season, finished in the top, uh, I think, second position in the amateur category, and he's uh, looking to do one better this season. Chile, uh, not quite uh, as uh, competent as Moons. He's all over the place. Look at that, he's sliding one way, then the next. I managed to keep it out of the walls and managed to gain a, a little bit of a gap there however you can do so much down the hill there's uh, not a whole lot you can do once you get onto the Conrad straight because the draft effect is so strong it drives us on the power post. so uh, much time uh, up the straight so that gap will quickly go down still highs leading the way by the way ahead of Antini and Yamantis the top three now separating out however Simonek has just got past um, Pinocchio and now he's going to try to get past McQuell as well He's done well to hang on to that position after losing a few places on the first lap. Pinocchio is now off the track. He might pick up a slowdown for that one if he's not careful. He might be all right. He's down to sixth position. And uh, that actually seems like he did get a slowdown as Lauer has gone on very deep and he makes contact to Simonek. Yeah. yeah, Pinocchio got a bit of his own medicine there going into the corner. He's normally the one being the aggressor into the corner. So a uh, bit of role reversal there with Simnek going from sixth, gaining a place up to fifth place. So steadily getting up the positions and, and still in touch with the with the top five as well. So uh, he, he just needs to make sure he's keep it clean. I'm pretty sure that that's in the back of his mind as we're watching uh, the Ronald Moons, uh, Parmley and Tullo. So top, Parmley's managed to get in front of Moons at the moment uh, with Tullo uh, in front of him. But... Uh, Harmony seems to be uh, mixing up quite heavily with the pros, Sam, at, at the moment. So he seems to be sort of not mixing with his own class and trying to mix it with the big boys as such. Yeah, he's uh, really uh, traversing those those ranks. Um, Moons, of course, was runner-up last season in the Pro Championship. Just shows how, how good Harmony has been. Uh, however, Moons kind of boxing in Harmony on that occasion is up into ninth position again but by no means is uh, is this battle over uh, by the way thanks to Ingronk for uh, uh, watching us on stream uh, supporting Pinocchio so it's good to see some support for the various drivers hopefully you're enjoying the stream and also welcome as well to Tommy Bitton who's watching along of course thanks to everyone who is uh, tuning in on uh, on YouTube um, at the moment and of course uh, if you want to you can check out our Twitch channel as well we broadcast all the same stuff um, all very much live and with a little bit of a lower latency as well on Twitch so do check out um, our our channel over there um, twitch.tv forward slash apex racing tv and of course if you haven't already subscribed to our youtube channel as well leave a like on the video if you have enjoyed it Pinocchio quite far away now actually him and Lau have really dropped away so I think the main battle on this lap at least is going to be McQuell versus Simonek yeah definitely but I mean what great camera angles there coming down oh a big spin there from Philip Sen uh, from 16th place easily done down that mountain section so yeah it's that bit there you can actually uh -oh. get up the corner for oh no what a terrible place to put his car in his way so he's pretty much um, taking out Andrew Brown there his front right hand tyre as you can see he's completely gone so he's going to have to go back into the pits and unfortunately uh, Sen is uh, pretty much done as we see him there go back to pits because as I was saying at the start you know great Great camera angles going over the mountain there. It just shows how much the, the cars move around on the top section uh, of this track, which is brilliant viewing and uh, fantastic pictures there from the, from the mountain section as we look back from Kayla Pipes. Still not getting away from Valentini in second place, so he's hanging on to his coattails. Obviously, that, that slipstream coming into effect, um, but Hyde seems to have the, the measure of this track. There's about a two car length, three car length uh, gap between himself and Valentini, with Germantas just uh, being quiet, really, in third place with Simonek right on his tail and Simonek coming 
it just pulls himself out. He's going to try to get that inside line over Germantus going into Griffin Corner. He'll probably get it done because it is quite an easy one to, to get into. He's going around the outside, but Germantus has got the speed going on the outside of the corner coming up to uh, the cutting, which obviously needs to be uh, car by car uh, going in. But we've got... <laughs> We got Le 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 just try on McWell trying to get on the inside, but unfortunately couldn't quite get the move done on uh, Simonek. But just showing his nose to Simonek to say, "Hey Simonek, I'm here. You make a mistake, I'm uh, going to take you." Yeah, and Simonek only got past uh, McQuay at the end of the last lap, I believe, and then was immediately onto the back of Yamantis. So it's a good pace for Simonek. He can still win this race. We've got one more lap to go. No, no, sorry, this is the last lap, apologies. This is the last lap because uh, the lap times are just over 2 minute 30s. Um, yeah, that last lap, 2 minute 33. And so we will just sh fall short of doing an extra lap. So this uh, chase um, down and then up the corner straight is going to be decisive in this race. Oh, it's currently with a four and a half tenths of a second lead. It's, it's going to be very tight in Valentini closing. Yeah, he, he seems to be stretching, he's keeping that gap to just arm's length from him. So they're going down the, past the uh, McFilmy Park, down to the skyline, to the dipper, to Forest Elbow, down to the Conron Strait, down to the Trace. So a couple of long straights here, and this is probably the best time that Valentini's going to have to try and do it. Needs to keep, keep him close into the Forest Elbow. He's trying to make a move on the outside, but the, the next corner is quite a tight one. So you're on that inside line, you are going to lose a little bit of speed. It seems to have got it up on uh, Caleb, but Caleb is uh, coming back at him at Forest Elbow, going down the Conrod straight now. So it's a big thing, <laughs> Valentini going on to the grass, and oh, yeah, comes Jamantas coming up from the rear to join uh, Kayla Pipes uh, into third place at the moment. Is this, uh, I think it was uh, Brazil all over again. No, Kayla Pipes gets it into second place and tucks it down the inside of Valentini on the start finish straight. It's going to be a fault line finish, but unfortunately I think that hit might have led Valentini to win. It has, and Valentini gets first place. Caleb just gets second with Jamantas right on his tails there. What a grandstand finish there, sir. Top four separated by three tenths of a second in the end. Simonek was right there as well, but couldn't quite make much of it. But he'll be delighted that Heiz wasn't able to take the race win. Parmalee wins once again in the amateur category. We have grown accustomed to that. And an excellent ninth place finish uh, will put him up in third position on the grid for race two. Uh, 11th, 11th place is the reverse, so Moons will get reverse grid pole. Um, and watch out for him, of course, former race winner in this series. And the final couple of Giles Crossing Lime as well, Samson and uh, Walsh, and a couple of others as well. Um, I think Heise will be a little bit disappointed with that one, honestly, there, Andy, because, you know, you wouldn't associate that. You know, he's outscored Simonek right there. He's gone from fifth up to second position, and he's had a lot of fun, I'm sure. However, those extra seven points in the championship could have been so useful and uh yeah he uh it was very near to cutting that championship lead to Simnik down even further yeah definitely you know it really really close battling on that last couple of corners obviously he didn't have the slipstream coming down the straight that we're seeing here going down into the skyline and dippers which obviously Valentini got on, got on him and then got on the side of him in Conrod straight and just got ahead of him and unfortunately uh, Caleb hit into him onto Murray's corner coming down into the pit straight uh, and unfortunately that would have scrubbed a, a bit of speed off him which gave Valentini the slight edge but you know all, top four cars within three thousandths or three hundredths of a second uh just shows how close racing these guys are and caleb yeah he's probably a bit disappointed but he just needs to knuckle down he's uh achieved his aim and uh got some paces in front of simonek but uh, good good win again for dan Palmley. he's getting like days off you with that but really good second round for victor Lewandowski. he came second in the ams so Considering where he was uh, last week, Sam, he's uh, he's done really well in this race. So, uh, well done. Yeah, avoided the instance impressively. The Draz already gridding up for race two, but there are the results for race one. Valentini, Hyde, Juventus, Simonek, McQuell, Pinocchio, Lara, Chulet, Parmley and Schmitz in the top 10. And you can see the rest of the order as well. The top 11 get reversed which I think is fair because there's quite a gap between Moons and Lewandowski so it'll be Ronald Moons who starts from pole position for this race too. Christian Smith is alongside him 
And of course, race one winner, Tom Valentini lining up in 11th. Honestly, anyone out of that top 11 could uh, really have a good chance at this race win for race two. Once again, 15 minutes, and it will be the, uh, the top nine which get reversed for race two. But for now, we need to focus on the lights. We need to focus on Ronald Moons, who's from the pole position. And it's an excellent start for him. Poor start for Schmitz. He might be under pressure from Palmley immediately. But just about has enough momentum to keep that second place heading into turn one. Again, no one really getting a big advantage over anyone else heading into the first uh, corner of the uh, race. And so it's largely the same way round. Palmley might just be under a bit of pressure from Churley. Who's uh, under pressure from Laura actually pulling alongside. Who gets the draft from the black and red car just ahead. Could well come out on top as they start to head up the mountain. Lara is pulling ahead ever so slightly. It's up into fourth position. Pinocchio is going to try to nip up the inside as well whilst he's at it. And Chile is at risk here of losing quite a few places. We're getting ambushed by a lot of these drivers. Extremely close at the moment there. Pinocchio covering off the inside. Uh, it's the last Simonek to go for a bold move on the outside of Macwell at the moment. Stupid aggressive drive from all these uh, front runners from face one already. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that sound where all cars got off the grid and no positions were made until the first straight down the end. Everyone stayed in their, in their position. So, uh, yeah, quite amazing. Never seen that before. So, uh, everybody on pace and got away really cleanly for the start here of race two. But, yeah, some excellent races. Oh, but bit on that kerb as we saw there you can see the height of the kerb going into that and how much uh, I think it was uh, it was I think it was Simonex car that actually bounced up into, into the air and quite easy to cause uh, suspension damage as we come down the back end of the mountain here this tight twisty left right left circuit oh. Oh, oh, big hit there from from uh, Valentini on Germantus and uh, I think that might be Germantus uh, needing a repair there but he's in a real precarious place does really well to keep it nice and clean going in there but it's lost a lot of place now down to P19, unfortunate for him um, with, the, with the hit in the rear that he got there. But as we look at it here, Roland Moon's trying to take on uh, Schmitz going down the uh, back straight, coming into Skyline, the S's and the Dipper. Uh, and he looks like he gets it done, yes. So Schmitz uh, is in first place still, Moon's just behind him, so he's all over him at the moment. Dan Palmley keeping his nose clean again in third place, really profited from that reverse grid and is well ahead of the next driver but a real battle here between uh, Schmitz and Moons going into the, to the end of the first race coming down into Forest Elbow. This is uh, absolutely excellent <laughs> from, uh, from Schmitz managing to get that move done at the end of the straight and uh, yeah shame for Yamantis and he just needs to try to get into that top nine but that would be tricky with the amount of damage he's got needs to be a pile pileup RC from here on in. Uh, the top guys had an opportunity to pull away RC because Simnek, you can see, he's lost quite a bit of time as the 171, a bit of damage as well. But these top six are fighting so hard, means trying to get Schmitz offline. And also Laura is maybe the beneficiary of this. He's up three places now. And just as we had at the, right at the start of, uh, of race one, it is a Luxembourg 1-2. One, Once again, this time they are teammates in low grip racing. Means not giving up and means gets a uh, a bit of a, a bump there uh, by Pinocchio. Probably helped out the Belgian quite a bit because he was really struggling for speed coming out of that corner. Now Pinocchio is one of the most aggressive drivers in the series and he was not uh, going to allow Palmley pass on that occasion. And all of a sudden that gap which had formed to Simonek, it was about 1.5 seconds at the start of this lap. Absolutely nothing now to these top six. Yeah, big long train going all the way down to Caleb Sio hasn't made up much ground. He's got he's up two places currently, uh, and I think he's just picking off the field. But as as you said at the start, Sam, the, this track is quite tight, uh, and and passing at this top half of this section is is really tight. So you gotta you gotta bide your time and and get that slipstream down onto the lower part of the the track to um, try and overtake. But obviously he needs to get into that top at the moment. He's in it being uh, nine places the reverse grid for the second so McQuell is currently in the pole position with Hides would be in the second but I'm pretty sure Hides wants to overtake Simonek and, and just try to claw back some of that advantage that Simonek has got in the championship at the moment. He would currently be losing points with Hides but um, yeah he needs to do everything that he possibly can and uh, Caleb wants to take at least uh, 10 points out tonight. Uh, Give himself a good chance. He 
into the final two meetings. Wow, this is super close at the moment with Simonek kind of slaloming his way through. He's uh, been able to uh, seemingly manage to uh, get alongside Chirley. It's going to be super close between the two of them. Can the 127 even get it stopped? Super brave here from Paral Simonek, but he runs wide and barely keep control of the car. We'll have to make sure that he doesn't pick up a stay as well. But Hyde does move ahead now. That's absolutely crucial. And so Hyde is ahead of Simonek for the first time in this race after starting behind. And once again, that gap uh, forming very large up to the top four. And, uh, well, it's difficult to know what to watch at the moment. Moons are, uh, are attempting to come back against Pinocchio. And Valentini with an ambitious move. He's the one who's going to lose out from it, though. But we've almost got cars coming to a stop with McQuell making contact. And I believe that move from Valentini, who can barely move now, such is the damage on that car. I believe it was originally on Dan Palmer, if I recall correctly. It was correct. Also making an ambitious uh, lunge into Hell's Corner. You know, an interesting fact. You know why uh, Town One's called Hell's Corner, Sam? You know what? I I have no idea. Do you have no idea? Well, it, it's a misconception that it's due to the amount of accidents are there. But in reality, what it is, there was a tree, a tree stump there that existed on the apex of the turn, and it was believed that any motorcycle rider that hit that stump would die in an act of folly and thereby be doomed to an eternity of death. So there you go. Well, I can guarantee you I did not know that before this broadcast. Uh, but I do now. You do so now, there you go. So do, so do all our listeners as well. 1938 this circuit started. There you go, that's my, uh, that's my turn. Great I think your fact was much more interesting, I must say. But this is a very odd circuit and also public roads I'm sure if you knew that Andy but uh, still uh, public roads really? Um, wow. in, in real life yeah you wouldn't have guessed that but you didn't know that before did not know that um, so the um, still the top four um, a little bit clever way quick shout out to um, Apex Racing Academy for sponsoring this race and also offering some great prizes um, Apex Racing Academy, 29 data packs. That's a data pack for 29 different cars. Each of them include track guides, setups, group coaching sessions, and a whole lot more. As uh, Schmidt just moves to the lead here. Oh, is, uh, is Pinocchio going to be able to get past as well? And he does. They are perhaps a little bit cautious right there. Drops down to third position. But uh, yeah, do check out Apex Racing Academy. They've got some fantastic setup sync technology as well, which downloads all the files that you want whenever you load into the iRacing sim. And magically, all the files are there. It saves you a lot of time and really does uh, make uh, the uh, the software a lot more easy to use. So big thanks to ApexRacingAC.com for sponsoring the series and also uh, offering some great prizes to the winners in each championship. Um, so yes, yeah, now Schmidt's leading the way, Pinocchio in second and Lara in third. We have got another three laps to go in this race, I believe. Yeah, Kyle of Tides is uh, slowly sneaking up there in fifth place, so he's uh, gotten to the back of the group. Now we're looking at a different group. We're looking at Franco here with Sen and, and Mullen, so a mid-pack mid -pack battle for, for the Ams with a couple of pros uh, thrown in the mix at the moment. So, uh, yeah, this... This, this straight is really long and really undulating. And in the old days, another useful fact, that peddler sign, when uh, cars were the, before the days of the modern e era of uh, aero, cars used to get airborne going over that uh, rise. There we go. Another interesting fact there, Sam. Very gutsy, were the drivers of old, uh, for sure. Uh, no, that's, uh, yeah, please go. Um, Healy is uh, now onto the back of Juventus, although this is kind of Juventus moving through, isn't it? I'm surprised Juventus hasn't had to come into the pits, honestly, because that crash he had earlier on was fairly significant, but um, well, you can see the damage for yourself on there, but it's not costing him that bad, it seems, at the moment. Yeah, I'm quite surprised about that, because he really hit that wall, which I'm surprised he hasn't got any suspension damage, but... Obviously, he luckily got away with it um, as we uh, as he's trying to claw his way back up to that reverse grid 11th place, which is currently occupied by um, McMullen at the moment. So, uh, 
be nice for him to get on first base. I don't think he's had a pole, he's had a pole position start this season, so it'll be uh, good for him with Lewandowski in 10th, uh, Parler in 9th. So Parmer Lee has locked out a little bit. He was obviously running in third place and now he's in 7th, so he's coming back into the Elms clutches. So you never know, his dominance may, may be coming close to an end. We'll have to see as uh, we're coming into the latter five minutes of this race. So about another two laps to go with Pinocchio taking, trying to take first place off uh, Smith, but he's got the inside line now for Murray Corner, so he should get this done uh, if he's in, oh, but Smith's covering off that inside line really well. Um, and obviously telling Pinocchio, you can't have it on this lap. So Pinocchio tucks in behind him, coming down to the start finish in to start off. The second uh, penultimate lap, I believe. Oh, they make it three, actually. Um, coming into the first corner, but we've got uh, Hyde's now going into second place and uh, nipped up uh, Pinocchio's uh, inside there and uh, takes second place. So Kyle Pai is quite a waste and we haven't really spoke a lot about him, but he's come from eighth place and suddenly just picked people off. And now uh, he's got Smiths in his sights and let's see if he can do it this race and come first. He is uh, definitely the, the fastest driver out there, it seems tonight. He's uh, absolutely flying along. Is Caleb Pai. I think the favourite probably to take this race to victory after his second place in race one. Simnik though did get past Moons on that last lap and was about seven tenths of a second faster than Schmidt. So you can see him, uh, the, the, the green and black car, just in the background, fifth position for Simnik. He should be on them by the end of this race. It w this will be the penultimate lap. We will just get in one after. Um, if we had 16 minutes, we would get an extra lap in. And of course, that would be an extra two and a half minutes out on circuit. But uh, just the way that the timings are working with the 15 minutes, just falling short of that extra lap. As uh, Schmidt is uh, has absolutely no cushion whatsoever. I'm sure Heise would love to get past around this part of the circuit. Really start to pull away because he knows that Simonek will be catching every single corner that he is behind Schmidt at the moment. But he has to bide his time. He has to be patient and wait till the con goes straight in order to get past. But you can just see how much confidence he's got in that uh, drop bear motorsports car and uh, well this should be an easy move at the end of this next trip. Yeah, as we see him coming around the corners, you can see him with two wheels off coming around some of them Ben's uh, fantastic pictures here from our, from our producer Sam, who uh, I guess barely mentioned on these broadcasts, but he does a fantastic job, so well done Sam. Uh, I'm not used to having the other uh, But coming down the straight now, going to the skyline, so Caleb maybe just uh, a bit biding his time because obviously on the last race he was leading in first place but he seems to be going for it now um because that slipstream is quite strong with pinocchio getting a bit on the grass at all oh, caleb Ibe's getting their back end out he's gone from possibly going into first to maybe getting into third here he might just keep second place yeah so smith goes from first to third pinocchio a lovely move up the inside taking both hides and smiths on that corner so he just needs to cement it now but hides coming back at him coming down onto murray corner down the start finish rate so and, and gaining a little bit of a gap so pinocchio will be uh defending from smith and uh, lara so we're going on to the last lap here as we were the first lap caleb pives is in the in the lead and we just have to see if we can keep it this lap with uh pinocchio and smiths and, uh, and lara behind him so the luxembourg contingency trying to chase down the italians and the australian an incredible move from Pinocchio heading into the chase. I mean, off the circuit going into the breaking out, but somehow managed to collect it all up. But yeah, Hyde's still in the lead. It seems as though it will just be a two way battle between those uh, th those couple of drivers because uh, the uh, the other three all bouncing one another. Schmitz taking the inside line and Simonek up ahead of Laura. Very kind of uh, difficult is that uh, is that turn two because. Uh, inside line is, uh, is a little bit banked and so if you get offline there it really does uh, affect you and that seemed to be what happened to Laura a lovely spatial awareness there from Simic just leaving enough space and swooping round the outside through the cutting to get ahead meanwhile Healy and Samsung have crashed and this is turning into a bad evening for Healy going to make more contact there and uh, well maybe we'll get a replay of that after this race is complete but out ahead Schmitz is catching back up. He's done an awesome job to get back in range. And so Hyatt and Pinocchio uh, will have a challenge here. 
Oh, I'm, I'm Caleb Pies doing a bit of uh, wall surfing there at the top of the mountain, luckily keeping uh, the car in a straight line. Pinocchio uh, and Smith, yeah, like you say, there, he's, he's catching him back up. He's well within striking distance for Pinocchio. So Pinocchio needs to be aware of that, and uh, we'll see if he can do what Pinocchio did on the on the last lap and uh, try and go from third to first. But Hyde's will be kicking himself if he loses this one again, going in first first place coming down the um, straight to the skyline S's and Dipper um, and, and losing it again as Pinocchio pulls alongside him uh, he'll get his he'll get him down these in, into the S's down to the Dippers um, Caleb Hive just needs to tuck behind him and then try and counter that back down the Condon straight uh, going into the chase so we'll see what he can do here Pinocchio defending that inside line vigorously do not he does not want to be oh no and Smith actually gets through and taps Hyde on the outside so luckily Hyde oh and Hyde goes into him oh no carnage here on the last lap taking both Hyde and Smith out of the race and uh, Simonek comes through to second place from fourth Wow. With Ivan Pinocchio on the top step of the podium is another race win for him and in uh, controversial circumstances as well but the Italian managing to take it. Simonek as you say up there in second position and that turned out brilliantly for him. Heiz was able to scramble the car across the line to fifth and I wonder if we could get a very quick replay of that incident to see. Uh, maybe who spot who was that blame we, we won't call it in the commentary box we have uh, we have stewards for uh, that type of thing but undoubtedly I think there's going to be a protest um, between one of these drivers there was a, an ambitious move there from um, for, from one of the drivers to go up the inside and then as Hyde rejoined the circuit contact between the two of them and I don't I think Schmitz even got to the line. He had to tow back to the pits, didn't have any drive in that car, and so will not even be within the reverse grid places. But I'm sure there's a couple of frustrated drivers there. Once again, Hyde's with a poor end, and Schmitz will be uh, yeah, absolutely infuriated with how that finished. Yeah, look at that last corner that Schmitz obviously pushed out. Uh... Caleb onto, onto the grass a bit more than he was already going to go onto it and unfortunately once you get on that grass you're at the mercy of the, of the gods where, where your car goes and I think unfortunately he came back onto the track and uh, obviously that's where he hit Smits and the both of them uh, had a clash but like you say we'll uh, see if they put a protest in and uh, let, the, let the stewards deal with that one uh, give them the edit okay so Yes, yeah. Just uh, yeah, just just to clarify for um, maybe new viewers to Apex Racing Leagues, but um, all all the Apex Racing League series have stewards, and all the drivers need to do is just file a protest, uh, fill in a Google form, and then the stewards will have a look at that instant, and they can uh, give uh, penalty points, uh, pit lane starts for the next round, a range of penalties that they can give. Uh, depending on the severity of the incident so yeah I imagine they'll have a, uh, a look at that one after the meeting is complete so I believe we can show the results then or in fact actually Langert um, must have started his lap right as well he started his lap after the leaders had finished the race it seems so he's going to extend this one a little bit longer um however it does give me an opportunity to say thanks to uh, sdk gaming for providing uh, the amazing overlay that we have it's a little bit bare at the moment but uh, of course we have the timing tower we have the battle boxes we have the check maps because you can see all the logos um up on screen as well there's so much customization you can do on sdk gaming you can make it look however you want pretty much um, and I'm not just talking about you know switching things in and out literally the entire design the entire formatting of the overlay can be changed if you know a bit of CSS and there's also a range of uh, templates as well that you can uh, use as well uh, including NASCAR um, the old Formula 3.5 uh, overlay that uh, they used to run in real life and of course we use kind of a Formula 1-esque overlay uh, for most of our series on Apex Racing TV so it's uh, an absolutely awesome setup great live timing as well which delivers all the info you could need and it's also great as well as a heads up display because it uh, has a fuel calculator and so uh, it really does provide you with all you need in order to have a good strategy so 
finally we had Langertz cross the line and so we can go through the results and you can see it's very dark all of a sudden because uh, well, it will be a night race for a race 3 of the evening. Um, Ivan Pinocchio then on top, 8 cents for a second clear of Paral Simonek, Philip Lauer in third position, then it was Ronald Moons, Caleb Heise, Dan Palmley was top of the amateurs again beating Russ Fowler, Thor Chulo was in 8th place and Victor Lewandowski will be on pole position because it's a reverse grid of 9 for race 3, so Victor on pole. Uh, Raphael Franco, unlucky for him because he gained quite a few places to Raphael, but uh, just finished one place short. As your Mantis, despite damage, finishing in a pretty good 11th place overall. Then it was uh, Damien McMullen, Philip Sen, uh, Darren Doherty, Andrew Bremer, Colin Samson, uh, Nathan Healy, Tom McQuell, Jay Walsh, uh, Paul Langert. You can see somehow 3 minutes 23 off the lead. I mean, it's a 2 minute 30 lap. How is that even possible? And then one lap down were Schmitz and Valentini, who were the front row, I believe, in uh, for the race one grid. So how their evening has turned bad. So we will be back in just a moment. We're just going to show you a trailer for one of the sponsors for the championship. Uh, whilst the drivers are having a little bit of a warm up and they are going to need it to uh, pick their turning points around this very dark Bathurst circuit now. But we'll be back with you in just a moment for the Apex Racing League Mazda Cup Championship. <laughs> Welcome back to the Apex Racing League Mazda Cup Championship live on Apex Racing TV. Once again, big thanks to Apex Racing Academy for supporting this series. There is a link in the description below to check out their website, uh, apexracingac.com, which is the go-to place if you want to improve your on-track performance in iRacing. Um, so uh, you may have noticed it is very dark, Southern Hemisphere, so it's only 6 o'clock in the evening, but um, yeah, this is what it's like. 15th of May in the uh, in the summer su southern hemisphere so there's absolutely no light around this circuit I mean there's no floodlights around this place Andy uh, but these headlights should be just enough illumination for the gyres to navigate their way around this circuit yeah so our second uh, night race of the championship so the first one was Interlagos another southern hemisphere track uh, and we go into the second one. I think the drivers actually enjoy having the night circuits. They don't really seem to get a lot on the iRacing circuit, so it's probably something new to them. But certainly around this track, it's uh, just to adds a bit more dimension to what is already uh, a very difficult track to drive around with the undulating ground. So it should certainly make uh, an interesting last race with, uh, you know, the, the reverse grid that we've got as well with a couple of arms on the front row. Um, there's a little bit different to what we saw in race two as we see a, a pretty good demonstration actually uh, on Sam Kuma to uh, point out just how much they can see. Uh, I did a test lap earlier on and, and some of these walls kind of illuminate when you have the headlights and if they're designed for that but it's almost like um, like reflective material which kind of shines very bright when uh, whenever you shine a light at it and so they uh, it's very useful and of course the curves as well are pretty bright as well. So the drive should have a, uh, a rough idea of uh, what's going to happen. Um, so just a couple more seconds now 
of the uh, of warm-up and then we'll go over to the grid for this race three of the evening and, um yeah of course nine places reversed and uh, as andy was saying a couple of rams near the top which is different to what we saw in race two where we saw mainly pros near the top and just one am within the reverse uh, you can see there three of the top four all amateurs so Lewandowski for the first time in Apex Racing League history on pole Thor Chile in second place against Ross Fowler Dan Parmley Caleb Hyde who really needs a strong race at the moment he'll be level with Paras Simonek I think tonight probably even behind on points and maybe a penalty coming his way as well so he really needs to win this uh, race through if he can Royal of Moons uh, lines up in sixth then it's Lara Simonek Pinocchio and Franco Yamantis uh, McMullen in 12th position he needs some good results as well, and the rest of the order will go through for you. Schmidt and Valentini starting at the back row of the grid. Really watch out for them to make up a lot of positions, especially if we see an instant near the front. We've just got Bremer and Schmidt's not on the grid, so I think Schmidt's may have uh, thrown in the towel for tonight. Um, can't understand the sun. Bremer's had some bad luck as well after having a car drive straight into him when trying to reach on the circuit. So I don't think those two will be taking part. But the other 20 are all ready for this 15 minutes of night facing at Mount Panorama. And we are away. A lot of real spin there, I think, for uh, Russ Fowler. And that might open the door for Parmley heading into turn one. It allows the top two, at least, to really pull away. So it's Lewandowski leading the way ahead of Chile. Fowler already off the circuit and Parmley off the circuit as well. And Parmley hitting the wall. And that might be Kurtzens for a good result. He's trying to keep control of the car and might even have to bring it to a halt just to get it back to the pits because that might be significant. It's doing damage already for himself. It's three wide as the drivers alongside and try to stretch past. Chile takes the lead meanwhile they've got uh, probably 10 car lengths to the rest of the cars already but it is the British driver who leads now. Yeah definitely a great start there from Tulo to obviously get in first place. He needs to stretch his leg because he's got Caleb Pines in third place who's made up two places but that first corner not the best one for Dan Palmley obviously took the corner right and I forgot who it was but the, the, the second man that was in the top three actually went off the track in the inside of turn one hence why Hydes was able to get from fifth to third in, in one corner so Hydes now like you said needs to have a good race uh, you've got Simonek in fifth he really needs to get the first and try to hold the Simnek has a has a race that goes further down in the in, in the uh, in the order to try and claw back some of the points in the in this championship. But at the moment, is in the right position, third place behind uh, Tulo. Lewandowski's obviously taken first place now, or Tulo going up into the mountain. So look through there. I didn't see that quite uh, happen in there, Sam. But Lewandowski obviously leading uh, the pack out, coming down off to the off the mountain. I mean, this is absolutely insane. As Cholo's to the oh, he's got past there. What's happened to Lewandowski? Did he hit the wall? He's very slow, so this is a big shame for Victor Lewandowski if he is going to not be able to finish. And he's certainly hit the wall that time. He's going to do well not to make contact. He does make contact. That was, uh, was that Pinocchio or Yamant? I think it was Pinocchio who made contact. So that is uh, hopefully not, not too much damage for the Italian. Hides, meanwhile, is up to the lead. Hasn't got a big gap over Mies and Simonek. The top two are very slow over the mountain. So it joins everyone together. I was just about to say the top 11 are all nose to tail. At the moment, there's not a gap larger than half a second between any of them down the uh, Conrad Strait. So it's Hides still leading the way. Chirlo second. And uh, Moons and Simnek, though, will surely be making their way past basing. Yeah, definitely. Tulo's been caught up with Hyde. Hyde's obviously he's now in the lead, so he's, he's got no excuse for it. As we see Paul Langer there, unfortunately, again, first race, he's, uh, he's struggling a little bit out there. Um, obviously having a little spin coming down, going down to the Conrad straight. So uh, putting him down into 18th place, as we see here, Damien Mullen, he needs to have a good race this round nine. He's had a pretty terrible first two rounds. He needs to have a round. He's in the top arm at the moment, so... Uh, bit of a change of angle. Dan Parmalee way down the list in 20 so certainly Sam that damage from that first corner um, is really affecting him. Yes, uh, yeah, good for, uh, for Parmalee. Um, I'm surprised he didn't come into the pits honestly but uh, soldiering round so it's where well, sector times were pretty poor. Sector 4 he had a second day incident it seemed in Parmalee so um, yeah more than just that uh, that hell's corner crash that we uh, we saw right at the start of the race. Mm -hmm. See Mantis. He, he can see plenty here. I mean he's got probably you know 10 
gizzard tons of light bulbs right in front of him lighting up the circuit so he's probably seeing it better than if it was uh, during the day honestly he uh, has got great visibility right there but uh, I think he'd like to be uh, near to the front honestly despite the good view Highs, by the way, 1.5 seconds ahead. You can see him scampering away. We're truly just holding up the rest of the drivers. Simnek wasn't able to really make much of an impression, so he remains in fourth in the train. As uh, these drives flat out for the entire top of the mountain. There's really no let off. Someone's hit the wall. Now, who is that? Was that Simnek potential? I, I thought it may have been. I, I think it was Moons, actually, who maybe clipped the wall, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I was lucky he kept hold of that car coming down there because that could have been uh, disastrous if he had spun it because of the close proximity of, like you say, the top 11 drivers. As this Ronald Moons again hitting them all, a couple of cars there hitting the, the wall coming down onto the uh, long straightaway down down here going down into Skyline. So, uh, yeah, that corner and the darkness sort of catching some people out going in there and uh, it's going to damage your car and also compromise your speed coming down here as we see... Uh, Moon's now trying to defend uh, from Sibinek. Nope, from Laura even, sorry. Well, he uh, did a pretty good job there. It means to keep behind uh, Laura, but Sibinek was able to get some bite. The high's now two and a half seconds, but pretty much won this race. I mean, he, uh, I would have backed him to win both races, one and race two, honestly, and he uh, fell short by narrow margins on both, but uh, really cannot see anyone coming close to him as he sets the fast up of the race considerably faster than everyone else out on circuits that last time round. Uh, now I still have to make that position uh, stick, honestly. Pinocchio up the inside, so Pinocchio, despite having some issues earlier on, seemingly not being uh, held back by any damage at the moment. He uh, almost had a collision through Forest Elbow with Lewandowski, but uh, didn't seem to pick up too much as Yamantis now has got the draft on these two and he might even make it three wide into turn two as Simnek has taken second place. Yeah, Simnek right behind, not where Hyde wants to see him but uh, obviously had a slow start to round one and it's got, it's got better as the, the rounds have gone on and certainly seems that the night um, goes well for Simonek. Um, we'll, we'll have to see if he can claw back that gap now that's uh, 1.7 seconds so he's got a bit of a gap to, to himself to Hyde but you know, and, and then we got Laura and Tolo just behind him with Pinocchio, and as we see, everyone on moves with Dramantis right up his uh, tailpipe, just uh, looking for that opportunity. But going up into the mountain pass is very, very hard to pass. But we have uh, certainly seen it before. But you've got to be brave to sort of pass up here because there's only really one line to keep a fast speed. Certainly going around this corner now with that treacherous. Uh, curb on the right hand side that you really want to avoid coming down into the into the dip away which is a uh, quite a hefty um, downward slope coming down here so as we can see there the guy's not putting the accelerator and letting the uh, momentum of the car carry him down as we saw moons there hitting uh, the wall playing ping pong uh, it doesn't seem to have, have got that right let's see if he gets this corner right he hits it last time um, yeah he seems to have got that one uh, sorted now so that one compromises the speed coming down uh, the first bit away um, so then Jamal is uh, right on uh, Moons' tail. Yeah, it means we'll have a, a what of a toe from the cars ahead, but it's really not uh, significant enough as Pinocchio is going to get past uh, Chile here. Chile can try, can try whatever he wants, but Iron Man's going to come past one way or another. Very, I mean, I, I keep on saying, you know, very bold driver. I mean, it's Pinocchio, but he has mainly kept out of incidents, at least in recent rounds. As we see an instant just behind, that was Moons and Yamantis. Yamantis understeering seemingly into Moons and nipping through the pair of them um, was Pinocchio, I believe. So Pinocchio up into fourth position. You'll be delighted about that one, I think. Uh, also, Franco managing to uh, get past Yamantis, who's down into eighth place. McMullen comes a bit off the amateur category, and it, it's taken us a while to say that, honestly, because uh, Dan Palmini's been so dominant. Palmini only down in 18th place. The chances of McMullen winning the championship right now are incredibly slim, um, especially with Palmini's consistency over the course of the season. But, uh, well, these are the types of results he needs, and he's having one of the drives of the season right now, is the Irishman.
Yeah, Dan Palmley down in eighth place of the Amph. I think it's uh, the small victories now for McMullen in, in these races to, to get in, but he's done a fantastic job. Um, obviously, didn't have the best first two races, but currently in seventh and uh, mixing up quite nicely with all the pros at the moment. Oh, a big hit there by Sen again, and he gets hit into the wall. You need to be careful with the cars behind coming up and make sure there's uh, no carnage. Seems to have uh, not gone in any way. He's probably going to go back to the pit shortly, but he's in a really precarious position on the uh, inside, luckily, and not on the outside of that. The turn two going up into the um, the cutting round uh, Griffin's Bend. So uh, unfortunate there to get taken out uh, around that. I think that's the second time. I think race two he got taken out as as well, Sam. So uh, Dan Palmley as we're currently watching here he's now in sixth place in the in the am so slowly getting his way back up after his first lap incidents on there but you know a great dive from mullen and i'm pretty sure that he'll be in the interview room uh thanking his praises for for where he's got uh, and uh, winning an am race in this uh very grueling track zone yeah we're going around uh around this place uh yeah probably uh means a, a little bit more than uh than the others, honestly, uh, especially when uh, you're passing as hard as McBullen is out there. So many drivers surrounding him, but yeah, there's Palmley considerably far behind. He's, um, he's 24 seconds behind, in fact. He's had to come into the pits as Palmley, but uh, still in a different postcode uh, compared to his main rival. Uh, that's not a good sight, though, for McBullen, is it? He's got uh, a line of cards, Yamantis, Moons, Valentini, and Sen as well. He was involved in that, uh, in that collision. Early run in the lap into a quarry bend. Uh, Juventus though is the first to get past. That was always going to happen after his off early run. Juventus, which dropped him behind McMullen, able to make amends now. Valentini, who took pole position uh, for race one, hasn't quite lived up to that. Uh, apologies, second place, I believe, uh, for race one. But he started all the way back in 22nd position for this race to a couple of jazz and take to the start, so technically 20th place. But it's gained uh, a lot as, uh, as Valentini and it's made up another one that is bold for means to put it up the inside. McMullen saw him and very quickly a 7th place for Damien McMullen has turned into a 10th position. He's played this uh, very well, actually, uh, McMullen. He knows that he doesn't really need to be battling with these people. Uh, he might as well let them pass, be uh, number one arm, which he is, and still keep that gap because uh, he can keep on the tailgates of these pros and uh, hopefully pull him along on there. So very astute driving there, I think, from uh, McMullen. Whether that was planned, uh, I'm pretty sure we can find out and, f and see where it is. Um, we've got San Sansom. I haven't seen uh, Sansom in... Uh, Second place in the AM, so this might be a, a first for him in Lewandowski uh, currently in the third place with uh, Parmelee in fifth at the moment trying to play catch up to Fowler, but he's a long way off Fowler at the moment. So uh, Dan Parmelee, you know, not his usual self, but unfortunately he had a few incidents in the first lap and he's probably carrying some damage. So uh, it'd be nice for some, some of the other AMs to get some of the limelight anyway, Sam. Yes, and I've just heard that Damien McMullen is suffering from food poisoning. At the moment, um, he posted that in the YouTube chat uh, between races two and three, and so he's apparently struggling quite a bit with it. But you wouldn't have guessed he is doing very well, and um, well, he's going to have to drink a lot of champagne later on. So I hope his stomach <laughs> does calm down a bit. Uh, Philip Sen just picking up a little bit of a of an off track. There. I don't really know how you pick up an off track around that part of the uh, part of the circuit. This is heading into Skyline and uh, maybe he's just taken a slight evasion no okay if he's gone up here that's dangerous and he's actually hit the wall and he's hit the wall quite hard hasn't hit the other wall at least he's MS5 cars they're built strong we were talking about it last season Peter Mackay and myself uh, just how um, strong these cars are and uh, once again exhibiting it there built very well yeah, awesome definitely. Nick off the track <laughs> definitely these cars are built like tanks I think and it's a great way for any of our listeners, if you fancy trying to trying to league out, this is a great league to join. The cars are all evenly balanced. 
very strong, obviously very forgiving around the cor corners uh, compared to GT cars. Um, so a great way to get into league racing uh, and try it. You know, you've got people ranging from a thousand I rating all the way up to five, six K I rating in this race. It's, uh, you'll always have battles of it. Wherever we look on the, on the stream, we'll, we'll see battles all the way through the field. So it's a hotly contested uh, grid from first place all the way down to last place, Sam. So I highly, highly recommend it if anybody is thinking about doing it. Go to Apex Racing League TV and uh, sign up. Absolutely, yeah, because there's loads of other series as well over on ApexRacingLeague.com. you got the uh, got the Mazda series, got the GT3s, the uh, Porsche Cups. That's come to an end now, but we'll be starting uh, up uh, eventually. Got another exciting series actually coming soon. Got NASCARs on uh, on uh, on Thursdays. We've got Formula 3 on Saturday. We've got GTs on Sunday. And we've also got a new Formula V Championship starting up on Monday. So I'll be starting in three weeks' time. You can see details of all of them on apexfacingleague.com. Um, looks like this one's going to go to Caleb Hypes. This is the last lap of the meeting. I think uh, we're just getting past Ocasi. I think we also saw uh, Lewandowski drop a few places. But uh, Simnik versus Pinocchio is going to be real close. Um, heading to the end of this race. Here they are, the four race eSports car. Uh, you went off the circuit on the last lap, but uh, avoided um, too much of a disadvantage. And he's got Pinocchio, Lara and Churlo all behind him. He does not want a repeat, of course, of what happened to Caleb Heights in race two, where he was biting for the race win, but collided and ended up uh, finishing uh, much further down than what he was previously. But uh, Pinocchio is going to try to get past right here. It would still be a strong championship lead for Simnek, even if he only finished in third position. Uh, heading into the final two meetings of the season. He doesn't need this second position particularly. I'm sure he would like to hold on to it. The 15 minutes are about to be eclipsed and Ivan Pinocchio round the outside he goes. He's got the inside for the chase. Can he get it stopped? He can't. He's going to go off to the grass and there's contact between the two of them. It is a repeat of what happened to Hyde in race two and he's going to drop down into fourth position but Caleb Hyde out in the lead is going to take his first race win of the evening and a crucial race win as well. Lauer moving up into second position. Is he going to hold on to it to the line? He does. He beats Pinocchio. Simonek drops two places right at the end which could be crucial points in the championship and Franco does well to round out the top five. Uh, that was a, uh, a very good one as McMullen, despite the food poisoning, finishes in 10th place and that's his first amateur win for uh, for a couple of meetings and it's very much well deserved and uh, once again gives him a, a spark of hope for the championship a bit he's uh, going to need some end to, uh, to to really come back Samson and Fowler rounding out the podium in those uh, categories in, in the amateur category but um, no that was a if anything maybe the best race of the evening honestly maybe we didn't see a battle for the lead too much there Andy but the batting just behind was uh, was was very clean I think on the most part maybe a little bit of contact right at the end there but uh, I think everyone was very well behaved yeah, I think every single race of the night has been exceptional the drivers have been on the whole, clean, really, really great racing, nose to tail racing. And as we saw there, I think Pinocchio got a bit of his uh, own medicine from race two, where he came from third all the way to second. Uh, Philip Lara did the same, obviously, unfortunately, those two collided, Simonek and Pinocchio, which gave Lara the opportunity to, and the overspeed to uh, get them down onto the last straight. So, uh, but great racing there overall. And, you know, what a stalwart if uh, he's got food poisoning, decided to do our racing. Uh, uh, so I'm over the moon for Damien uh, to get a race win for, for the Amin race three. So well done, Damien. Yeah, Jay's commitment. He'll probably come to an interview with us, you know, even if he's uh, <laughs> sat by a toilet, um, throwing up his guts, he'll still uh, make an effort to have a chat with us. I'm sure he'll be in a great mood as well regardless of whatever he's regurgitating. So um, look forward to that one. Healy is a cosine rubbish evening for Nathan Healy, but um, at least he did uh, complete all three races. And there are the results. So long time coming. Caleb Heiss finally gets a race win. And he might be the highest point scorer tonight. Maybe Lara or Pinocchio might be, in fact. But so it'll be close between the three of them. Uh, Simic won't have lost too many points either. Goes into the final two meetings, meetings of the season with... 
Uh, what I assume is probably uh, a 30 point advantage. Um, may maybe, uh, maybe even more. Quickly having a check. Going into this round, it was 37, so yeah, probably 30 point lead for uh, for Sim next. So mission accomplished tonight, even though he uh, didn't take home a race win. Then it was Rafael Franco, who had a rubbish race one, but apart from that was brilliant Franco. And uh, shame we didn't see a little bit more of him. He was maybe a bit under the radar, but for the hub racing driver, uh, did very well in both races two and Three. Thor Chulo was in sixth position, then it was Tom Valentini, Aris Yamantes, and Ronald Moons, Damian McMullen finishes top of the amateurs, then it was Philippe Sen, Colin Samson, uh, Ross Fowler, Victor Lewandowski, Dan Doherty, Paul Langert in his debut, uh, well done to him there in 16th place, uh, Jay Walsh, Dan Parmley with uh, his worst race for a long time, but uh, still good race one and race two, so not too bad for Dan, uh, Nathan Healy, and Tom McQuill will score points. McQuill was only two laps down. However, will not score points will be Brioma and Schmitz, who did not take the start. I think they were quite uh, annoyed at how their evening was going, so uh, did not take part in race three of the evening. Quick shout out as well to Virtual Racing School for uh, being another sponsor for this championship and helping us on Apex Racing TV. Virtual Racing School with an immense amount of data packs, over 50 of them. And that covers not only road racing, but also oval racing as well. And they've got some brilliant uh, coaches as well on the oval side, along with the uh, road side as well. Uh, they've got setups, check guides, some fantastic data analysis software, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. So do check out Virtual Racing School, and of course, if you buy a subscription to both Virtual Racing School and Apex Racing Academy, you can integrate our one and the other. So you can use the live time, uh, you can use the data analysis, sorry, from Virtual Racing School on your Apex Racing Academy setups, and you can use the Apex Racing Academy setup sync uh, function on your Virtual Racing School uh, setup. So uh, it's very useful to uh, download both, get a subscription for both. And uh, well, you'd be very quick if you did do that. You'd have all the tips to drive that you could possibly ever need. Um, we might get some tips from the interviews that we're about to have. And first up, I want to have a chat with Caleb Hydes because um, he had an up and down day, but did get the race win in race three. Uh, congratulations, Caleb. We've got, uh, well, we could talk for an hour, honestly, about this meeting. Uh, but first off, I'll just ask you, I mean, how are you feeling right now? Because that one looks very frustrating for race one and race two, but it was a satisfying end in race three. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I don't know. I can't tell if I'm like happy in the middle or not too happy. Um, I mean, obviously, glad to take the race win um, in the feature. Um, I was able to just get ahead from lap one, really. I think I was in the lead quite early and could just pull away and get a gap and was quite comfortable up front. So that was good. But yeah, it was a, a, a bit of a shame in the, the two first races because we were right at the end in both and got screwed over a little bit. But nothing we really could have done. Like it was in the last corner for race one and then it was in the chase for race two and race two ending was a bit unfortunate because we had contact um i forgot who it was but i was sent onto the grass and the grass was so slippery you could barely keep control of the car and unfortunately hit coming hit the other driver coming back on but i mean yeah it was unfortunate but overall i think it's an all right meet yeah, and, uh, and also qualifying as well. We were a bit surprised to see you so far down because you were three tenths clear in practice um, and then qualifying you were six tenths down. So, I mean, uh, do, do you recall exactly what happened there? Um, yeah, qualifying was unfortunate because there was a crash in the dipper and I was right behind someone and I was on a pretty good lap and couldn't avoid where they were and got damaged. So I had to come back to pits and only got time for one flyer, I think. Um, at a draft as well, everyone was in the draft. So it was quite difficult to get a good lap. Um, but you know, top five was still okay to start and I was able to, you know, get up front quite quickly. So it ended up being all right, but yeah, it was disappointing not to be able to put in a good lap, but either way, top one. Um, the championship's fairly close between yourself and Powell. 
was that playing on your mind tonight? Was that uh, something that was uh, in the forefront of your mind when you were racing out there? Um, yeah, I've really got to, you know, start to wheel him in because I think it's about 50 points the gap. So basically since Lime Rock, I've seen the championship standings and you coming into here had a good chance to be quick, which we were. Um, and I knew I just have to keep getting out race results if I want to challenge for the championship at the Roval. So, um, yeah, it was disappointing to not have a, a really good event here. Um, I get some really good points, but I still think uh, with P1, P2 and a P5, that's still pretty good. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It makes the championship a bit more difficult because I think we come out of here basically the same as what we came in. Um, so with with six races left, it's going to be a challenge to try and close him uh, in the championship standings. But as always, I'll give it my best and we'll see how we go. Uh, we visited, of course, uh, a classic of Australian motorsports uh, tonight. Next up, we're going to a classic in British motorsports. It's Alton Park, one of the best circuits in the world obviously i think in these cars genuinely it looks like a lot of fun i always want to join you out there have you got any experience with that car track combo um yeah i've got a bit it's quite a fun track especially with the if we're running the chicane layout it makes it quite interesting and a really big challenge actually um but i don't have probably as much experience there as some of the other tracks but i've done a few official races and they've been pretty fun so yeah looking forward to that that should be good and then really uh, keen to get to the Roval as well at the end real quick there last season and I it's probably my favorite track on iRacing in the Mazda so yeah looking forward to that when we get around to the Roval for the last season for the last race sorry well congratulations on the race win tonight Caleb is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to oh yeah just big thank you to my team Dropper Motorsports sponsors and Cozy Sam Blacklock Media Hybrid Racing Simulations and Revolution Race Gear. Awesome. Well, thanks for having a chat with us, Caleb, and uh, best of luck for next next time out. Thank you. Have a good one. Caleb, Caleb hides there. Second place in the championship and first place, at least, in that race three. Second place and fifth place, I believe, in race one and race two, respectively. Um, Andy, who would you like to have a talk with? Oh, it's horny, yeah? between Damien and Daniel. Let's get Daniel in. Hi Daniel, welcome to the commentary box. As the song goes, two out of three ain't bad. So first race, uh, first place, second race, first place, third race, eighth place. So we uh, saw there in the eighth, your first lap wasn't uh, the best. Um, how do you feel it went? Yeah, third race, definitely not what I wanted, but um, overall expectations were exceeded. Um, I found I really enjoyed this track, Andrew. It was um, it was a lot of fun getting prepped for it. I did only about an hour, hour and a half, plus a little bit of the practice time before, um, before the broadcast. Uh, lost Dan there, or his, his sound uh, has gone, so we'll uh, come back to Dan uh, shortly, and we'll see if you can get it sorted out. Dan, if you can get that sorted out. Can you hear me, Andrew? Me? Can you hear me, sir? I think, uh, yeah, can you hear me, Andy? I, think I can hear Andy Sam can and hear I can hear both Sam. I, I, I can hear you, Daniel, so I'll, I will hijack <laughs> this uh, this interview. Um, of course, uh, yeah, you, you were saying about that race three, a little bit disappointing, but um, I mean, the racing looks super fun out there. It's, it looks super close, slipstreaming. In particular, I think Ronald Moons, he had a Vega battle with in the first couple of races so it's uh yeah it looks like a pretty hectic he hectic out there yeah it was a little bit hectic you know it, all, all i wanted to do this week was just stay ahead of damien and just try to collect as many points as i could um really didn't set the bar too high but definitely the first two races exceeded my expectations and i'm not going to worry too much about that third race i'm definitely not going to hang my head with that one just a little bit of bad turn just did not appreciate with the cooler temps being night just how little grip i was going to have um and then in the dipper the rear end just came around on me i was trying to tiptoe it through there just trying to maintain position and it just pendulumed on me and, and that was that and then made up a few positions and then got run into um i think they call it the chase 
it was whatever after that fast right hand under the braking zone i just got plowed into and uh broke the, the the left rear axle so i couldn't go had to had to get a fast toe coming to the white flag but over looking forward to next week uh, just try to get another uh three good finishes um hopefully a little more consistent than this week was but i'll definitely take two out of three yeah speaking of next week i mean you've got experience around kind of summit points and virginia in real life i i, I feel like um Alton Park isn't too dissimilar to those uh, to those tracks, so um, should be uh, quite a bit of fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think um, the first race of the first season of the Porsche Cup you guys put on, I think that was our first round, and um, I definitely had a lot of fun there. You're right. It did definitely remind me a lot of Summit Point. You know, long, some long straightaways, but, you know, very, very technical track and very high-speed corners in a couple places. So definitely looking forward to it. Hopefully a little more uh, a little more drafting, too. That's, that's always a lot of fun in this car. Yeah, it sure is. Um, if uh, w would you like to give a shout out to anyone? Give a shout out to the family again. My parents probably watching, and give a shout out to my wife as well. She might be watching too. Um, but uh, thanks for that, Sam. And we'll see you next week. Awesome. See you then. Uh, Dan Palmley, there, your race, uh, your amateur race winner in both race one and race two, and then uh, I think fifth place in the amateur category in race three. Andy, are you back with us? I am indeed. Looks like I had a bit of a technical issue there. I couldn't hear anybody. Well, I'll I'll let you have the honours of the uh, of the last uh, interview. He might be, uh, yep, defecating right now, but uh, you know, it should still be good fun with Damien McMullen. Yeah, definitely. Hi, right, Damien. Welcome to the uh, commentary box. Um, so a bit of a mixed bag for you tonight. Um, bit of an incident in race. I think it was one or two with your countryman Nathan Healy, which. Uh, didn't didn't go off too well um but uh, a great win there in fair place and albeit with uh, food poisoning so what a stalwart yeah with the dealing with food poisoning ain't fun when you're trying to concentrate but yeah no me and nathan were kind of having a bit of fun but look it's racing and when we come to the track we're we're still friends but when we're on track it's everyone for themselves but look we don't we don't go out to be upset with each other but for race two and three i'm happy with the positions i got with the ordeal I'm dealing with at the moment. Yeah, no, you've done outstanding when Sam uh, yeah. told me about that. I thought, wow, what a what a, what a legend that you are, Damien. <laughs> um, so, um, obviously, a commanding lead with um, Dan Palmley out front at the moment in the yes. AMS. He's almost got one hand on it. So, it's probably nice just to, to get to get the race wins during the races uh, in these events coming up to the last two. Um, I suppose, is that how you see it? I see the way it's going, it's going to be to the end, but at the moment, the way Dan's driving, there's no stopping him, and it's just really clean driving from him ahead, and I'd love to be battling with him, but just, he's just very quick, and I've just realized if he keeps going the way he is for the next three races, he might have his own up, but the position I'm in in P2 in the championship, I'd be happy to take that home with me, if I can. Well, I'm sure the way you're going, yeah, you will do. So, obviously, the next round, we got Alton Park. Uh... Have you got experience around there? I do indeed. I'm terrified of those chicanes, but we have to <laughs> knuckle down and to make sure we bring the car home again. Yeah, so last last two rounds of the championship. So we got yes. Alton Park and then we got uh, Roval uh, as, the, as the last round. So uh, a good run in for you and uh, you should wrap up the second place. Please God, I hope it just be positive and say keep everyone happy around everyone. Yeah, well... Uh, Obviously, I won't keep you too long because you're probably suffering as you are, Damien. No, so. no, you're fine. You're fine. I'm going to get a lovely glass of water and then I'm going back to bed. <laughs> oh, bless you. Uh, would you. So, would you like to give a shout out to anyone, mate? I just want to say thank you to you, Andrew, and to Sam for all the work you do and to the team of Apex and to all the sponsors, my friends. Thank you for supporting me. No, thank you for giving us entertaining races, Damien, and uh, look forward to seeing you all in park. Hopefully, you feel a lot better, mate. We'll do. See you next week, lads. Thank you. See you next week. There we have it, Sam. Obviously, Damien. Um, stole what he is. Sounds like he's suffering really bad, but still manages to come out for his Apex Racing League Monday night specials that he, he likes to do. Definitely. No, that's, um, yeah, very good to have him out on circuit. And, uh, oh, maybe you could get food poisoning a bit more because uh, he drove very well tonight. Um, just updates to the championship, by the way, and heading into the final two meetings of the season. As uh, Hyde was the highest score tonight, so he managed to cut the gap, um, I believe, from 30, uh, 38 points to 25 points. 
and so he pretty much did what he needed to do. If you can keep on cutting down by that margin, it's going to be very close by the end in the amateur category. It's now a 68 point lead for Dan Palmley, which would be, uh, unless McMullen starts to win races, would be almost insurmountable as long as Palmley finishes all the races from now to the end of the championship. So uh, looking good. Um, for Palmley in the amateurs, but uh, still all up for grabs in the periods. Just a quick word, um, Andy, on Alton Park next time out. I mean, I, I said earlier on how, you know, I won't be out on track because that car track combo sounds like so much fun. I mean, I feel like it was uh, th this MX-5 was almost uh, born for that track. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I love racing around Alton Park as well, so it's going to be a really exciting one for me and having the car combinations that we have and having the people in this league and the close battling that we've had all season on track for, whether it's for first place or or 15th or 18th place you know it, it, it's it's been amazing to be a part uh, of the commentating team commentating on the, on this season and it's been it's been one to remember for me that's for sure and i'm really looking forward to autumn park which is one of my favorite tracks uh, and yeah and i hope the racing still continues which i'm pretty sure it will and it's really good that there's a close battle there for the Pro Championship with Caleb obviously getting some points, which means uh, there's a all to play for for the last two rounds. And uh, Simonek will be uh, aware of that and obviously aware that he can't have any more drop rounds. So the pressure is really on him to make sure that we, he can keep um, that championship and not let Caleb um, bite to his heels. So uh, all to play for for the last two rounds. But yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, should be great. That'll be on at the same time next week. We've got uh, the penultimate round at Alton Park, and then in a fortnight's time, we will have the uh, final round from the Charlotte Roval course. So, uh, going to be uh, a great closing to this season two of the Apex Racing League Master Cup. Uh, once again, big thanks to Virtual Racing School, to SDK Gaming, and to Apex Racing Academy for sponsoring this championship and offering prizes to the top drivers uh, in each of the Pro and Am uh, championships and also uh, to the uh, top teams as well in the teams championships. So big thanks to them. And of course, uh, do leave a like on this video if you haven't already, if you've enjoyed it. Certainly the racing was, I thought, uh, very good tonight. Make sure to subscribe to Apex Racing TV because we've got 20 of broadcasts happening every single week in oval racing and road racing and literally every car i think is covered when it comes to road racing prototypes single seaters gts and uh all of that stuff so uh do check it all out and uh to check out our twitch channel as well because that is also where we host uh, or broadcast all of our races so uh, do check out our uh, Twitch channel at uh, twitch forward slash Apex Racing TV to uh, see all of our streams over on that platform. And of course, uh, do check out apexracingleague.com as well to check out all the news series that Apex are announcing uh, for you to be able to race in. Uh, but for now, for myself, Sam Fitzpatrick, from Andy Thompson and from Sam Kumo, we are going to say goodbye and we will see you next time out at Alton Park for the penultimate round of the championship. See you then.